A rebound today, not quite big enough to make up for yesterday's losses, though. The Dow finished up 207 points, closing at 25,532. The S&P 500 up 22 points to end at 2,834. And the Nasdaq up 87 points to finish at 7,734. Market analysis now from Jim Lowell. He's the chief investment officer at Advisor Investments and the editor of FidelityInvestor.com. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Jim. Hey, Brian. All right, so what do we make of the trade war? The president says it's a little squabble. The Chinese say it's really serious. It threatens all of our people. And the Dow seem, or the, the markets, the investors seem to believe the president. Well, look, for a day, we got a, a minor relief rally, but the negotiations are going to be ongoing, likely to become more difficult before they get less difficult. Ultimately, I think this is uh, a state of affair that when dealing with uh, a world superpower and a world super economy like China that has clearly been able to get its way for decades, uh, suggests that this is not going to be negotiations that go fast, smoothly, anytime soon, even if we get, as I suspect we will, an optical deal done. We still are going to have to uh, be negotiating, I think, with China for not just months or quarters, but years and decades to come. It's the way, it's the way this this kind of deal making is going to have to get done. That said, uh, I think it's more than a squabble. Uh, I was a little bit alarmed by the terms and phrase that we saw coming out of China. Effectively, papers calling for a people's war. That goes back to uh, really the Maoist handbook. And we've got to remember that uh, the Chinese press is not a free press. It really is the voice of the government. So they're certainly viewing it as more than just a squabble. And it's not just in China where there is trouble in other parts of the world. We've got what, the, what else the president was asked about today, that New York Times report, that there are plans to potentially put 120,000 troops into the Middle East. That can't make investors happy. If that were to happen, I can't imagine what the markets would do. Anywhere you look, uh, investors have reason to be nervous. The geopolitical events, the event-driven news, the headlines continue to provide a whirlwind of concerns over and against the fundamental facts that our economy continues to grow. We're at full employment. And uh, earnings certainly came in uh, better than expected. Companies finding ways to profit in what remains a low interest rate, low inflationary environment overall. So the fundamentals remain healthy, but the headlines clearly remain unnerving. Let's talk a little bit about those fundamentals. Small business uh, confidence today. What did we hear? Hit a four-month high. Uh, it's April data, so this was before uh, the tweet storm and uh, the recasting of, of the trade talks went from looking optimistic to looking pessimistic. On Friday, we'll get a consumer sentiment feed with May data, so that may give us a slight feel for how investors and, and overall consumers are feeling. Tomorrow, we get uh, builder's confidence, retail sales, the manufacturing gauge. Again, not enough to stem the tide of, of event-driven news if that tide picks up in velocity, either incoming or outgoing. And it could all change on a tweet. We've gotten used to that. Jim Lowell, Advisor Investments, Newton, Massachusetts. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Brian.